Hello, and welcome to a short demonstration of Pion Flux technologies. During this session, I will introduce the various hardware and accessories used to run flux assays and demonstrate how to assemble the constituent parts and run an experiment. Finally, we'll take a brief look at the data we might expect to obtain from these tests. The Microflux is a small volume flux apparatus which utilises the MB8 and Rainbow as a platform to run these assays. The flux pairs consist of two 20ml chambers separated by a PVDF membrane coated with a GIT lipid solution. Movement of compounds across this membrane simulates absorption of a drug compound in vivo. Two versions of the flux pairs are available, a reusable glass pair assembled using a membrane holder and removable membranes, and a single-use plastic pair with the membrane pre-attached to one half. During this demo, I'm going to focus mainly on the glass pair, but the procedure for running flux assays remains largely the same for both sets. To assemble the flux pairs, we will need four separate components. The glass chambers themselves, a PVDF membrane support, a membrane holder made up of female and male parts, and a Teflon washer. We will also need to have to hand GIT lipid solution for coating the membrane and our media for our donor and acceptor chambers. Typically this will be an aqueous buffer in the donor chamber and acceptor sink buffer, a proprietary solution containing chemical scavengers in the acceptor chamber. Assembly starts by placing the membrane into the female half of the membrane holder. This is done wearing clean gloves and using tweezers. It is important to ensure that the membrane remains clean and free from oils from the skin. On top of the membrane, the Teflon washer is placed and the male half of the membrane holder is screwed into place. The membrane and holder are bidirectional and can be assembled into the glass pair in either orientation. To aid with assembly, the O-rings are wet with a small amount of Diano's water and pressed into one half of the flux pair. At this point, we can paint the membrane support with the GIT lipid solution. 25 microliters of GIT lipid are pipetted onto the membrane and distributed to ensure complete coverage. Once fully coated, the membrane will have turned completely translucent, and from this point onwards, this is a time-sensitive procedure. After painting the membrane, the flux pairs must be filled with media within no more than 10 minutes to prevent the membrane from drying out. The second o-ring was wet with water, taking care to avoid contact with the membrane, and pressed into the second half of the pair. Finally, the join between the two halves can be wrapped in parafilm to ensure against any leakage. A cross stirrer bar is placed into each chamber and the donor and acceptor chambers are filled with the relevant media. To prepare for running an assay, the assembled and filled flux pair is placed into the MB8 and is allowed to equilibrate to temperature. The movable arm is lowered and the fiber optic dip probes are submerged in the vessels.
A short shake of the probes is useful to dislodge any air bubbles which may be trapped in the windows. Switching to the AU Pro software, the first thing required is to normalise the probes for the background absorbance of the media. The stirring is turned on, and the 100% transmittance is collected. Once the background is collected, previously collected standard spectra are imported. The spectra shown here are of naproxen. The channel at the top of the screen, channel 1, shows the spectrum and calibration of naproxen collected in pH 5 aqueous buffer. This will be used for our donor chamber. Channel 2 represents the sample in acceptor sink buffer and will be used to quantitate our acceptor chamber. Second derivative spectroscopy is used to combat any potential turbidity in the media, and an appropriate wavelength range is selected. The run stop button is pressed to bring up the task editor. From this window we can enter details into our sample model. The assay is given a title, and the flux assay type is selected. On the right hand side, sample information is added. This includes the sample name, molecular weight, mass and chamber volume, as well as analytical details such as the path length of the UV probe. The next screen allows the analyst to set up the stirring parameters for the assay. The stirring speed is input, along with a countdown delay, allowing the analyst time to add sample to each channel in turn before stirring and data collection is commenced. The final setup screen is for inputting the number of data points to be collected, and the interval between each, thus defining the duration of the assay. Up to seven data collection sectors can be defined, allowing the user to collect data at different frequencies depending on the stage of the assay. The autosave feature can also be switched on at this stage. The assay is now ready to run. Clicking the run button will initiate the start of the assay. All samples should be ready to add to the vessels. For our example, a concentrated stock solution of naproxen is pipetted into the donor chamber. The volume added is equivalent to a loading of 5 mg. The instrument starts to collect spectra and the dissolution curves are populated in real time. This section of the data collection is sped up. In the donor chamber, addition of the sample as a concentrated stock solution briefly supersaturates the sample, but we start to see precipitation of within the first few data points, and by 10 minutes, the concentration reaches the intrinsic solubility. There is a lag period associated with the movement of sample across the membrane, and it is not until 12 minutes that we start to see appearance of the sample in the acceptor chamber. Provided that sync conditions are maintained in the acceptor chamber and concentration is constant in the donor, the movement of sample across the membrane will be linear. Modeling of the appearance curve can also be performed in the software to obtain flux values, which represent the amount of sample crossing the membrane per unit time per unit of the membrane area, and are proportional to the gradient of the appearance curve seen here in the acceptor chamber.